I take it as a huge victory for me and rebuke of these two judges, Theodore Schwang and Paula Zinnes, uh, by the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. Though delivered in a wimpy and protect the judges fashion. Um, I, now, what the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals found is in that my latest uh, appeal, my latest request for emergency injunctive relief, uh, what Judge Zinnes did is basically throw it in the trash and just say no without giving any kind of rationale. And, and so uh, the, the High Court found that, in fact, Judge Zinnes did that this time. Now, but that's the same exact same thing these people have been doing like a hundred times, which is basically all my requests. They just toss it in the trash, just say no, possibly a one or two word BS explanation, meaningless, and just and just tossing my stuff in the trash. So I keep getting sicker and these people keep harming me more and more and I keep sending requests to these judges and this is what they do. And so, in fact, the high court found that in this latest incident, they did just that. And the other incidents are all exactly the same. And and also then, this high court, they didn't want to directly call out the criminal actions of, you know, carrying on a hoax, which were the computer crimes. So, uh, I'll show you how the fourth, now I'll show you what uh, Judge Schwan did when he got into the conspiracy. See, I had requested that this Medicaid contractor, uh, MedStar, that they go ahead and just follow the Medicaid rules, give me my medical care, which includes telling me what my medical condition is and so forth. And it's all in the Medicaid laws. And it's also in, if you look at um, MedStar Family Choice or any of the Medicaid managed care contractors, you can see they have an enrollee handbook, they have a provider handbook, and they all show all the rights that I'm entitled to. So I was asking for these basic rights. And so, and since now I'm with the Medicaid program and they're the ones supposed to be giving the medical care, so these people don't want me getting medical care, they, they, they want to complete this evil crime which is to have me suffer and die and also they want to conceal and not be held accountable for the crimes they did so they don't want me to get the medical care and they have me now exactly where they want in the Medicaid program uh, Obamacare and because here although all these laws and rights are there on paper. In reality, these people do whatever the heck they want, and that's what they. And that's actually what Judge Shua found. He already saw that they were just doing whatever they wanted, and so I was just asking to and get my rights enforced. So the the scheme was so so I so the my case was originally against Ole Inoa. And then I added in, I didn't really add MedStar Family Choice as an additional party. What I said is, since they are related and I need them to provide this emergency medical care, um, um, it was, I had a, I requested a court order against this related party without actually adding them to the case. So what MedStar Family Choice, uh, MedStar, and the Maryland government in conspiracy with Judge Schwang did is they went ahead, they added MedStar Family Choice as an intervener to the case. And once you are an intervener, you're actually a major party. You are, you know, so it's not even as though I'm getting some requests from a third party. You are almost like a defendant or a plaintiff. So uh, when you are an intervener, um, then you, you are a party to the case. So what they did is they added the, um, 
what they did is they added MedStar Family Choice as an intervener, but they were not supposed to do that. That's only supposed to come by court order. So Judge Shuang was supposed to write in a court order that MedStar Family Choice is being added as an intervener. Uh, so they added MedStar Family Choice as an intervener and I thought it's just an error and I didn't even really understand exactly what an intervener is. So I just kind of let it go by. And so, so, so what they did is, so essentially, and then, and then, um, MedStar Family Choice also made a request to be added as an intervener temporarily. And so, and then later on, what Judge Schwan did is Judge Schwan not really ruled that MedStar Family Choice cannot be added as an intervener. Uh, he ruled that this MedStar and all have no connection to the case. They cannot come on the case in any way, and I cannot even get an order against them as a third party. So all the while, the hoax was going on that he had already done it on the computer, adding them as an intervener. So what happens is, um, this the the people who are supposed to give me the medical care, which is MedStar and which is the Maryland state government, um, all of a sudden they are not being held accountable to give me the medical care. So. So now they can get away with not giving me medical care and finishing the crime. Um, but at the same time, by having them listed as an intervener uh, on the computer file, um, they can claim down the road, so, so, so they can claim down the road that they were held accountable and it was found that they did nothing wrong. And I can explain to you this trick. This would be exactly like if the, if the parents of a child uh, uh, who, you know, who, and the parents were neglecting the child and a judge and they colluded with the judge and the judge actually writes that uh, these are not the parents of the child, so we cannot make these parents do any duties or obligations towards the child because these are not the parents of the child. Okay, so they get, uh, they escape all accountability with that. But then if you look at it at the same time, the, uh, the school and the neighbors, they all know that yeah, these are the parents of the child. And they want to know why these parents are neglecting their child and not being held accountable. So by having, um, so, so if you list them as the party secretly on the case, what happens is these same parents can tell the school and tell the neighbors that, hey, look, I'm on this case, okay, and the judge found that I did nothing wrong. But actually, that's not what happened, right? The judge found that they cannot be added to the case because he lied and said that they are not the parents, right? So what happened is not that they were held accountable and it was found that they did nothing wrong. But now they are able to claim because it's on the computer file that, uh, you know, that they're listed uh, on the file so they're able to go and tell the neighbors and tell the school hey look uh, you know I am listed as a party on this case and the court and the judge found I did nothing wrong so so that's the trick so so in this case not really does MedStar and the Maryland state government they're not being held accountable to not give me my medical care uh, at the same time, they are secret, and, 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 and the reason given is they are not a party to the case, and they have no connection to the case. But secretly, they are doing exactly the opposite. They are listing their name as a party to the case, and and by listing their name as a party to the case, they this is exactly what they did when Senator Cardin's office sent a letter, sent request to. Uh, 
DHMH, the secretary of DHMH, you know, who resigned later, uh, Van Mitchell, he sent a letter uh, letting Senator Carter know that, hey, look, um, the case was heard in federal court and they found that uh, MedStar and the Maryland state government did nothing wrong and the case is still in federal court so in case there's some future problem the federal court and the federal judge will take care of things so you don't really have to worry about it everything is being taken care of but that's not what was going on right so 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 they they did the computer crime to get the credit in one way and at the same time officially uh, those people were completely kept off the case and this was a conspiracy and this was a hoax